Hello and welcome back to another Marvel Champions Draft where Villain Theory and I are going head to head to try and pick the best five leadership cards in Marvel Champions. We did the aggression one, the justice one is coming soon, but here we are for leadership. How you doing Villain Theory? I'm doing really good. Leadership famously my famous kind of joint fate most uh, <laughs> favorite aspect, so yep. I'm uh, I'm excited for this a lot. Nice. I, I am too. And now we did come up with a couple of rules for this draft to make it a little bit more interesting. The first one being no allies. So we are actually drafting the top 10 leadership cards that are not allies, which I think makes it a, makes it pretty fun. There's still a ton of really good cards in leadership, uh, but no allies. The other one is that we did have a gentleman's agreement that we are not going to choose the power of leadership. I, I snuck that one in for the aggression draft, and I think going forward, we're just not going to do that card. Just know that the power of leadership is a very, very good card. <laughs> you should, Resources, you should probably good. Be run Resources <laughs> are good. You should probably be running power of leadership. That being said, this is kind of to highlight the fact that we have a new podcast out. So the uh, leadership podcast from Shadow of the Cast, which is going to be posted anywhere you can find podcasts or on Villain Theory's channel, is out or coming out? Villain, will you help me with that one? <laughs> it will be out by the time this is out, unless you're very, very quick editing. But no, no. Uh, episode 14, which is exciting. So, yeah. That's impressive. That I, I had no idea that we had done that many. But we take a deep dive and look at the leadership aspect, which is why we are now drafting those cards. So make sure you go check out that episode. Whew, okay, so... We have done a good number of drafts at this point. Last draft was the aggression draft, and you chose first, which means that I get to take the first pick for the leadership draft, and we will go snake style. So I will take a pick. You will take two picks, two picks, two picks, one pick. So that's how we're going to start us out. Any Anything that you want to say before we dive in and I make this first choice? There are so many good leadership cards, even without the allies, that I'm not too worried that I don't go first here, because I can be like, oh, I'll go for this card, or this card, or this card, or this card next. In some ways, maybe getting two next is going to be an advantage. I'm not sure. I, um, I was kind of hoping yeah. I went second, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That being said, I actually broke up my uh, draft picks in tiers this time, because I thought that there were so many. And so I have, like, I have at least four in tier one so i will get two of them minimum but <laughs> we're gonna start out with the overall draft pick i'm gonna go with make the call make the call is the recursion card it's a zero cost card you pay the printed cost of any ally in any player's discard pile it does not have to be your own which i think is really interesting and can open up some fun builds which we do talk about a little bit in the podcast and put that ally into play. This can be so powerful because basically what Make the Call is, is this is a flexible card that is another copy of any ally in your deck. So if you want to play Professor X again to Confuse or Nick to draw those cards, you can use Make the Call to do that. You can use the power of to double up on the ally's aspect. You can get your signature ally out. You can pull in Maria Hill, have everyone draw a card. Make the Call is so versatile. And so interesting. And we talk a little bit about, it. is it overpowered at zero cost? I don't know. It's just so good. At most of most of my leadership decks, and this is probably a pitfall I have from a diversity of deck building standpoint, I always put make the call in my leadership decks. So that's my number one overall pick. It's a copy of every single ally in the game, and you can run three of them. So what, what do you think about make the call? <laughs> Yeah, I think if I've got Nick Fury in my discard pile, make the call basically becomes another copy of Nick Fury. So yep. putting three extra Nick Furies in my deck sounds kind of like a good move to me. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> um, it's so flexible because it's not only, you know, you can recur the best allies with it, but you can also just recur the best ally for the situation. You can steal other people's signature allies, which can be quite powerful. It's crazy but it is really fun you know we talked a bit on the podcast about you know the diversity i haven't really ran make the call or recursion for all, quite a few months realistically but it's still fun and i think if you want to do it you should do it because i have lots of decks even like published from other ctb about make the call it's really fun even if you're not using it for its most powerful uses you can pick like a bit of a quirky weird ally that maybe has some un uh reliable timing and make the call can help make it reliable mm -hmm. so it's really fun in that way as well really thematic as well you know get you know uh maria hill on the phone uh <laughs> say you need some backup and i think yeah make the call is going to be my number one pick as well i'll just be straight up honest i want to say like oh terrible <laughs> pick it's good it was it's so good 
Yeah, I would I would even go out to say that make the call can be argued that it's better than Maria Hill itself because you can play it out a turn. And because it's an action, you can call on the action. If you are fourth player, a lot of the times you don't want to play, Mar like you lose a lot of value for playing Maria Hill as not the first player. Call on the action, make the call, pull Maria Hill back in. Now everyone gets the card before they even get to take their turn. It's so good. So, so, so good. Yeah. But, mm. well, I'm glad to hear that it was your first pick overall as well, too. So that makes me a little happy. I'm but... not. I'm not happy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. But. That does mean that you have to shake it up a little bit. What are you, what are you going with for your first pick and second pick? Because you get two. Well, I've got to figure out what will compete with make the call now. And I'm not allowed, <laughs> because of our agreement, no allies. I can't pick Maria Hill, which I think is the natural default mm -hmm. uh, if we were including allies. Uh, so I'm going to hit you guys with two cards from two different archetypes that, yeah, I, I think are going to be pretty good. And since we just spoke about make the call, what could Rival make the call, except maybe regroup? So mm. this is less powerful maybe in solo, though it still can be useful and really good there, especially in high difficulties. You know, if you're something like Spider-Ham that can taunt the enemy. Regroup is, you know, when the enemies uh, take out as one of your allies, it comes back to your hand. So if I keep regrouping, now Nick Fury that I've maybe made the call for to get in play, he's going to come back to my hand and I'm going to keep playing him. And it's glorious. And, you know, take this to four player, where there could potentially be a minimum of four attacks from the villain if you're in hero form. Everyone's going to block off their allies. It's going to pop back to all their hands. It supports the team. And you're just playing the best allies on repeat. And allies are, <laughs> in my opinion, the best card type, you know, most powerful uh, card type, you know, across all of these different types. It's just so, so, so good to get them back again and again. And it's a tactic. So if you're Cyclops, you know, you might get it a little bit more than the, the average hero. <laughs> Yeah, and since it does come back to your hand, worst case scenario is you're giving people plus one hand size, right? Yeah, Which is a really case. good value for two effective costs on regroup. Regroup is one of those cards that I slept on for a while. I put it in like a Cyclops deck because it is tactic and brought it to, I think the first time I played it was Kana Heroes. With three, four players, it's almost a staple for the blue decks. Yeah, it's, it's one of those cards that... I don't always use because otherwise I'd always be using it if that makes sense. It's kind yeah. of like in that category, but there's no reason if you want to use it, you shouldn't. You know, you just, it's so, so good. And it's going to be really fun. And you often have, you know, you play it, you get allies back that give you card draw. You play those again, you draw into another one for that turn. Uh, so it it is, it is, it is good. Strong card, very good. <laughs> very, very good. That, uh, that was definitely on my list. So <laughs> on your top tier. Uh, that was actually my top of my tier two, mainly because I think what? it falls off. I think it does fall off in solo. And I yeah. think a lot of my plays, most of my plays are in solo, and I typically am not running regroup in solo, which is the only reason why it's tier two. If you look at it in a vacuum at mm. tier, if, if we're looking at only four player games, it's in my top tier. This worries me because now you're getting at least three of your tier one, basically, um, which, is, which is very scary for me. And I have a suspicion... <laughs> My card here, because I actually don't hear you talk about this card much. Maybe you're going to get all of them. I don't know. So that's interesting. That'd be exciting. Is it yeah. Eternity? Pick, you're going with Eternity, aren't you? you? You might have to wait an Eternity for that pick. Uh, <laughs> ha ha. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's really interesting because I my main play count is two players. So maybe I rate regroup slightly higher because I remember I picked, I picked cards from multiplayer in previous drafts and they've not done so well in the comments, even though I think these cards are like, so so good mm -hmm. so that's very interesting that's yeah do you want to hear my next card i do i really do are you strong enough to hear it no no do you have, a, do you have enough numbers because it is strength in numbers and <laughs> that's a good one i i love this card i think if you're not recurring allies in leadership and you're looking to build for power i think this is i don't hear it talked about much anymore it used to be talked about a lot i don't hear it talked about much now i still think this card is maybe one of the most powerful ways to build a deck in the entire game it suits some heroes better than others, but it suits pretty much everyone, in my opinion, because it rewards playing lots and lots of allies, which is uh, famously quite good. But then you turn lots and lots of allies into lots and lots of card draw. And I can throw out names like uh, Ironheart, Scarlet Witch, Bishop. Bishop with it is crazy. Uh, some ones if you want to try it and you haven't already. But on most characters, strength in numbers, it's just, you know, exhaust as many allies as you like, draw as many cards, and... Cards are good. Your allies are still there to defend for you in the, the villain phase if you need it. Um, and it's money. It's just, you've got the allies out there. Let's generate some money. 
and you can generally combo more cards and you know a bigger hand is more flexible more options more combos and it comes together very very beautifully you can do it with avengers assemble i think is quite famous but you can just do it in a generic deck with generic allies from all different traits and card's good yeah yeah the the card is so good it's one of the the first it came out in the first wave i believe like it's a fairly old card is it the first hero pack the first hero pack there you go perfect in america yeah captain america America. and so like i i I think that it has fallen off in terms of how much people discuss it that being said i think it's still one of the best cards in the game um just because it's been around for so long people have played with it people understand the power and now it's like ooh, new shiny toy but i think it is important that we revisit that card because of how good it is there's so Cards are good. Cards in a card game are good. <laughs> and if you can get up to easily three allies, but now pretty easily more than three allies with all of the you know ways that we can increase our ally limits, run Stinger and all yeah. of that, drawing seven cards is game winning. And, yes. and so <laughs> it, it's really, really really good that was definitely in my top tier <laughs> okay thank you yeah yeah, yeah. That's, that's so good because i was worried you're gonna get your entire top tier and i was like have i missed stuff here yeah strength in numbers incredibly fun too because a lot of the time you're just drawing more hero cards which shows off more of your hero which i think is mm-hmm. really really exciting so it's kind of different for every hero you know uh if i'm running recursion leadership i'm probably recurring and playing the same allies a lot the whole game but strength in numbers i get my hero cards uh, whoever whatever hero i put it on so just yeah. a little bit of a fun factor still good 100%, 100%. Strength and Numbers is a very solid second pick. So you, you're you running with a regroup and then a Strength and Numbers for your top two. It's bouncing back to me for my second and third pick, and I do have some, some options out of my tier one. The first one that I'm going to go with is Call for Backup. Uh, yeah. Call for Backup is one of the leadership player side schemes that we have. It's one cost, three threat per player, but when you thwart it down, Every single player at the table gets to go find an ally and put it into play for free. It's so much value. It's so impactful, <laughs> so much tempo. And if you can get that out turn one, if you're playing cable, put it out there. And that is a that it's hard to argue against a call for backup coming into play. Now, sometimes with like superpower training or uh, build support, there are characters out there that may not benefit off of that. But there's pretty much zero deck builds in the game that are not going to be like, heck yeah, I'm here for a call for backup. Yeah, let's do that. And so, especially in the higher player count games, thwarting it down, getting four allies onto the table, that can be a Nick, an X, that can be... I'm trying to think of the most expensive allies in the game, but you can put those into play <laughs> and it triggers all the in-play abilities and it just it's a huge tempo boost and... Yeah, I, I, I just really, really think that Call for Backup is probably, it probably should have been more than three threat per player. Let's say that. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe I should have picked that over Regroup. I'm not sure. I do think Regroup, the ceiling, the repeatable use is so, so good. But Call for Backup goes, you know, I say I don't run recursion decks really anymore, but I actually, you know, I'll, I'll throw a little Call for Backup in <laughs> almost all of them <laughs> just yep. to, you know, get the, the good ally for a good price. It's such a, you know, you maybe maybe you could see it's like a loss of tempo. Oh, I got to put you know, in two player, which is what I mainly play. You know, six threat there, but then two really expensive allies coming out potentially. You know, Captain Marvel is one I like to combo around. It is mm. you know a crazy one, but you can just you know Nick Fury and away you go. It's so so good and kind of fun. Same same kind of theme as make the call. You're calling for backup, which I think is just a fun thing to do. Yeah, yeah, it's it's very solid. Um, I am always happy when I draw that into my opening hand because in solo or four player, so pretty happy with that. My third pick is a little bit more of a niche pick, but I think it's so incredibly powerful that it deserves to be here, and I'm a little scared you're going to take it if I do not take it right now. That's Uncanny X-Men. Uncanny X-Men is a support. It's a team card that you can play under any player's control, and it states that it, that all of your X-Men allies get plus one hit points. Then if each of your characters has the X-Men trait, each of your X-Men allies cost one fewer resources to play. There are a lot of really good X-Men allies out there. There's a lot of really good synergies in terms of upgrades and ways that you can manipulate your X-Men allies. So getting them out for it really cheap, some of them even like one cost, like Angel now is a one cost if you are an X-Men character. Yep. That is so good. And being able to play Nick for two, opening up your ally slots with Utopia and just kind of like 
flooding the field with allies. As Villain was saying, the allies are probably the strongest. Or no, I will go ahead and say allies are the strongest card type in the game. And so when you're just giving a flat bonus of reducing all of them by one, that's a winning strategy there. Combine that with uh, the fact that maybe it could be hindered, like Mighty Avengers is a little hindered with the amount of like viable Avengers that I would want to play. X-Men doesn't really have that because we have so many good X-Men allies, both in leadership and in basic, that I really don't ever have an issue running uh, or filling out my deck slot and like, man, I really wish I could include X ally from another tribe. No, I really don't have that issue with X-Men. Yeah, Uncanny X-Men is a little bit... I've been told I shouldn't use the word broken because it sounds like, <laughs> oh, it's too, you shouldn't use this. But no, you should use it. It's such a fun card. But here's the thing. Heli Carrier, three cost card, discounts one card by one cost. Uncanny X-Men, three cost card, discards an ally by one cost. <laughs> you, you might think that's fine, right? But what if I play two allies on one turn? Now it's a double Heli Carrier. But wait, it gives a plus one hit points to them as well on top of being like a double heavy carry and you know the situation where you have enough allies in hand, but leadership X-Men probably very <laughs> likely to, especially with uh to me my X-Men, you could combo with it and all sorts yeah. of different things. Uh we've got so many powerful X-Men recently. Like I was alarmed, you know, like when I saw I think Triage, I was like, wow, I can get two healing off this. Then we got Beak, and these are now <laughs> one cost. And Beak. Speak. Uh, it's so it's so good. Um, my 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 only downside, the thing that kept it into my second tier, not my top tier, is that it is trait specific. Yeah. So if I'm trying to build a Captain America deck, Uncanny X Men isn't going to be in that kind of thing. But in terms of the X Men characters, probably either the most powerful or top three worst case, but probably top two. You know, top most powerful builds for any of the X Men characters, typically in my opinion, just comes to Uncanny X Men every time. Uh, probably people in the comments can be saying, no, this character does this, this character does that, but I even challenge you, uh, Uncanny X-Men Shadow Cat, just be invincible and flood your board, and it's it's uncanny. It really is. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's why it's probably not my number one pick, but I do believe that it deserves a spot in this top 10 list because even though it is tribal locked, there are a lot of X-Men characters in the game. There are a lot of X-Men allies in the game so that if you are running a X-Men character and you're running a leadership build, the optimal strategy is probably putting this card in the deck. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling pretty good with my top three. You are here for three and four now. What uh, what do you got for us? I'm torn between whoever I go, like, link all into the recursion, but I feel like that's, you know, this list isn't, you know, best best is debatable. Are we going for power, or a little bit of fun in there? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe go for the middle. So I am going to throw out there, first of all, one of those cards. And it's going to be Rapid Response, because this card, also Wave 1, a lot of Wave 1 on Corsair and uh, Regroup is Wave 2, I think. A lot of early cards here. Rapid Response is very, very good. Um, you play it, I think it's two cost, it just sits there, and then, oops, my ally's gone, I'll bring it back. And uh, It could be a four cost ally, it could be Nick Fury, and I can just bring it back, get cards. It could be uh, a five cost ally, it could be anyone, and... I can get an ally of any cost back in. They take a damage, sure, but it's just so powerful, especially if they have powerful end play effects, that it's really incredibly, incredibly good. And the advantage it has over something like Make the Call is that A, expensive allies can get brought in for cheaper, but also it will just sit on the board for when you need it. And that is very, very powerful. Yeah, that was the last one that I had in my tier one slot. Uh, rapid response is one of those similar to make the call where I'm probably running at least one copy in there to pull back in a nick for a double attack or something like that is is probably one of the worst ways to use it. And that's still a really good way to use it. So the rapid response recursion is very good, especially for those high cost allies. Yeah, that. I no notes, no notes on the pick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool, cool. So that's that's my really really good card, powerful card out of the way, and it is really fun as well. I actually, you know, bringing that ally back in, getting that thing, especially if you've got like a combo with it, beautiful. Especially if you trigger it on your turn by readying up allies to like do something mm -hmm. fancy, mm -hmm. beautiful. I love it. Um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, am I gonna change tactic? I'm so torn. I'm gonna go for a card which is very subtle, 
kind of in some way like it won't win you the game on its own it will just sit there and do its thing but the thing it does for its cost it's very good and we talk about it quite a bit in the podcast i will say i think nelson might know where this is going maybe it's going to be clarity of purpose it's a one cost resource generator that generates a wild resource for anything you like yes you take damage but it's so 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 good just to get that cheap resource generator out there open up your you know hand play more cards from it uh it's fantastic if i if this was a basic card i'd be taking it in almost every deck in every aspect mm-hmm. yeah clarity of purpose is right there that was going to be my next pick so you you did it you said that right before we started one of the goals of the the draft was to steal one of my picks and you did that so clarity of purpose is really good we talked about it in the podcast all the benefits that it provides getting that cheap resource generator to help you get going then you can toss it stop using it you do trade a health, which can be a little tough for some characters, but it did come in the SPDR pack. And we talk about how you can trade like the strengths of like the 14 hit point heroes or higher hit point heroes kind of need some of that resource smoothing and clarity of purpose just provides that in blue. So great pick. I very much enjoy clarity. I'd like that you can play it on any character. It does not have to be your hero. So if you want to, you can throw it on a high health ally can throw it on another hero if you're playing multiplayer and give that bonus out it's a it's it's a very good card very very good it is a good card (laughs) is that my two picks done now is that is your two picks so Uh, there's so many good cards left (laughs) there are so many good cards left and i really wanted clarity of purpose you have so many resource generators now um which i guess like (laughs) I guess Uncanny X-Men is kind of a resource generator. It's a resource. Uh, it's not a resource negator. Uh, <laughs> but there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of good cards out. Um, I think I am going to go with my next pick. Oh, it's tough. Yep. Um, uh, I'm going to go with... I'm, I'm bouncing between, I have two, but I'm a little afraid of where I'm pigeonholing my list. And so I'm trying to pick one from here and then one from another archetype. I was really hoping Clarity of Purpose was going to be left on the table because that would solve all of my problems. <laughs> like it does in the game. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, I, I think at the risk of being too much into X-Men, I'm going to go with To Me, My X-Men. So to me, my X-Men is a one-cost card that allows you to search the top five cards of your deck for an X-Men ally, put it into play at the end of the phase, return it to your hand. What's really, really important here is that a lot of the X-Men have win entering play effects, and you draw it back to your hand after you have drawn up to your hand size. So the printed cost of one here is a little bit of a rebate because you do get that cost back. So if you're drawing back up to five, you're actually going to be getting six cards in your next hand, which means that you can play that ally again or... Similar to the regroup discussion, you pull it back to your hand and you can use that as a resource for next turn. Triggers all of the X-Men supports, Utopia, et cetera, et cetera, like that. And just, it's so much fun in Cyclops. It is just, it's so good in Cyclops. I play it. I mean, he's on the he's on the card, so it's, you know, it's not a secret that he's, it's Cyclops is <laughs> really good what? to me, my <laughs> X-Men. But if you can flood the deck with 20 allies, you can guarantee pretty much guarantee that you're going to hit an ally in that top five cards, which I think would be the one downside. Now we have a lot of manipulation in order to make sure that you do have something in that top with like uh, with Domino or something like that, where you can manipulate that. But to me, my X-Men is I think a very, very, very strong card getting expensive allies in. If you can hit beast, Ooh, that's a very satisfying pull beast in, pull a oh, resource yeah. and now you profit. Mm, good stuff. So with the risk of already having Uncanny X Men on my list, I still think that we have enough X Men heroes in the game that I'm able to put both Uncanny and to me my X Men. Also, the fact that you run both of them in the same deck and that's a stupid deck right there. <laughs> that's uh, that's gonna be my fourth pick. What do you think about to me my X Men? To me, my X Men is a really interesting one. I almost put it on my second tier, but I didn't quite just because if I was judging it purely based on the Cyclops, it's going in there without Cyclops. I do think you will struggle to find as many allies that good, and it can miss. I've seen it miss, and I've seen it miss on various people's streams and stuff uh, as well, and at the table. So that's the downside of it, that it is unreliable. But when it hits, it's so good. It's like really, really good. And it's really fun as well. It's kind of got that, you know, kind of thrill, like, who am I going to find? Oh, I found this one, I've done this, and then uh, it might line up really well with your next hand of cards you draw as well. So you get kind of this double benefit from finding it, like double kind of, you know, uh, you know, kind of... Uh, 
reward in my brain from it, which is which is always fun. So I do like it. It wasn't going to be on my list. I would say <laughs> that. I feel like, for me, this is the weaker pick. And I feel like, oh, maybe I'm coming back into this because I felt like, Ooh. you know, cool for backup really <laughs> put you on the, <laughs> in, a good, in a good place. But uh, yeah, that's, that's good. It's a fun card. Yeah, the last thing I will say about To Me and My X-Men is that it is a fun card. Like, it, it, it is in the epitome of fun. It is a very strong card as well, but it is really fun searching the top five and finding that ally, putting it into play, and then just just going for the rest of the turn. So that's my fourth pick. The My last pick, I have a couple of other cards, and I think a lot of the cards are very good when you start looking at, like, pigeonholing them into specific tribals or trait locks or anything like that and so knowing that i already have a couple of those on the list i'm actually going to go a little bit broader for a, a a card that i think works very well in any leadership deck and that's because allies are really good that's going to be a Treskelion. so this is a one cost support that opens up your ally slots it gives you 33% more allies that you can put onto the table. Typically, you can only have three. Treskelion allows that fourth slot, which can be so very good, especially if you're running like a Voltron build where we talk about it in the podcast, where you're kind of taking up some of those ally slots. But then again, allies can chump block and you don't want to chump block for your al with your allies. And so if you have a couple of extra slots that you can cycle allies in to block and then you can use your hero activation for something that's not defending, I think that is just really good. There's a reason that they put a cap on how many allies you can have in the game. And so anything that increases it by that much can be very, very strong. Yeah. So that's a, that's Treskelion for me. It goes in any type of leadership deck. You don't have to be an X-Men to use it. It works really well with strength and numbers. Uh, <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on Treskelion as the last pick? Yeah, I really like Triskelion. You know, sometimes I wish I had two Triskelions. I really want to increase the ally limit, or sometimes we're doing like a two-player game where both leadership or like, you know, multi-aspect or something. I'm like, I wish we could both have Triskelion. So that's a, that's a great pick. It's interesting that it has no power on its own. Like, if you're in a bad situation and you play Triskelion, it doesn't do anything yeah. to help you out of that situation. But if you are doing well and you can fit it up, or, you know, it's, it can really make some strategies pay off in a huge way. You know, I run it with every Strength from Numbers deck, uh, guaranteed. Um, and a lot of other decks, a lot of X-Men decks, because the extra health from Uncanny X-Men means they're going to stick around. Uh, so we got, you know, combine it with Utopia's uh, ally limit increase, and off we go. It's really, really good. So it's interesting. It's interesting for like the top five. Like I'm thinking, I was spot. It wasn't on my list to have here because it's you know it doesn't just do anything its own. But in combination, it is so good. So I do really like it. I like that we talked about it. Another course set card, I think. Yep. yep. And really still relevant. Really good, you know, leadership cards aged really well. I'd say most aspects of cards age really well, but leadership, you know, these cards are still core pieces, and I think that's why they're in the core, uh, <laughs> you know, box of the game. I think it's really good. <laughs> yep. So there's my five. You got one more pick. What are you taking? I'm really torn because I, you know, I, I like gave you some, you know, flack for like, oh, that's locked to a trait. Uh, <laughs> Most of my remaining choices are locked to a trait, whether it's like a tribal kind of thing like Avengers, or I'll, I'll spoil because I can talk it through now. I've got like <laughs> summoning spell is on here, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going for. But I have one more card left that isn't trait locked that I think is really good, actually kind of underrated in a way. I actually don't know if we mentioned this on the podcast, so you know, this is a little sneaky extra mention. Mm. That's made me want to mention it now, but that's it's it's so it's so tricky. Do I go like flashy tribal thing or do I go for this? Which is Technically, kind of a worse version of a card you've already mentioned, but I think I've got to talk about it now. I've set it up. I really like this card. I think it's underrated. You can put it in a tribal deck. You can put it in a non-tribal deck. You can put it any way you like. And the card I'm talking about is going to be team training, which is mm. just plus one health to all your yeah. allies. And that's so much value, especially if you get it out early. You know, If you have enough allies out that you can block with one, keep the others alive, or better yet, defend with your hero, You know, have a stun up, have a card of yours to help. You can build up these allies that are just getting so many repeated uses with really good stats it combos really well with something like mighty avengers which will boost their stats um but it boosts, uh, you know goes well with anything where you want to you know upgrade them like voltron builds as well it goes well with just general value builds it's incredibly good and it's rarely the wrong choice to add it even if i don't always just for deck space you know there is a tempo question there mm -hmm. but the value is incredible 
Yeah, team training was right there next to the Treskelion. I was waffling between those two for my final pick. Also, summoning spell was the one that I was like, if you don't take clarity of purpose, I'm either taking to me my X-Men or summoning spell, but I was like, I, I'm, I'm locking <laughs> myself too much. But I think summoning spell is very good, so I'm glad that we yeah. were able to talk about that as well. But team training is there. The reason I went with Treskelion over team training is that I think a lot of the leadership builds that I see are cheap allies to chump block, and then the extra health doesn't matter as much that being said voltron anything where you want to utilize your allies it's a whole nother activation and that is really good especially if you have the attachments on there and you're pumping those stats up and you're getting a lot more value out of an activation if you can increase the amount of times the ally activates yeah that's really good and it's not just one time it's every single ally that you put on the table gets that benefit so similar to yeah. uncanny it's not just a one-time use. It is every single ally from here until the end of the game gets additional health when it's played under your control. I think that's really strong. Yeah, it is. You know, uncanny X Men. Like it's it's you know the same, but I get the big discount. So like team training is technically worse, but it's a little bit cheaper, and it affects everything. You can put it anywhere. You can put it in the same one if you really want. And I'll even say in a swarm decks, you know, if you're trying to just flood the board of cheap allies. If you don't get attacked extra times by the villain, quite often you will still have them left over and you maybe get some use out of them. I mm -hmm. just think it's incredibly good to have this global health boost. It's really good. And they reprinted it with X-Men art, which means yep. you can kind of swag out your deck with the correct kind of uh, style, which is another secret bonus it has if you have uh, both the, the art versions of it. I really like it. And the last point I'm going to throw out there, actually, that occurred to me as you were talking about it, even if you're up against someone like Sandman or like the flight modular indirect damage overkill, it oh, can yeah. really help with that a little bit as well. Yeah, especially if you're swarming. Especially if you're swarming. Yeah. yeah. Are you? Are you, I? I do want to talk about a couple other cards, but in general, are you happy with your top five? Yes. Yes. I wish I'd got cool for backup as well. That is my. <laughs> that's my regret that lives in my heart that I'm kicking myself for. But I really like these cards. You know, I think they are generally phenomenally strong. So are yours. So I think we've got a really good list between us there. Yeah. The leadership is just such a great aspect I, I am glad that we limited it to not include allies i think that was a fun restriction uh oh yeah the other two cards that we have not mentioned that were on my list are pretty niche we have psychic kicker uh for yep. psionic um, zero cost ready and ally they get plus two it's a lot of value <laughs> oh yeah you have to be psionic which is the tough part which we don't have too too many of those characters but yeah it's hard to run a phoenix leadership deck without that card Oh yeah, and every Psylocke deck I make, it goes in there. I just and I play Psylocke quite a bit, so it's just I love that card. Very good yeah. choice. And then the other one, which I think needs to be mentioned, I don't think it would win, ever win me a draft, uh, is Welcome Aboard. Welcome Aboard, I think, is a very good multiplayer card because yeah. you, it's a zero cost card. You can only play it if you're a Guardian, which is tough, uh, <laughs> especially as <laughs> teams get better. Um, but it reduces the ally, the next ally played by two. And that can be, it's effectively a double for allies that can be used on other yeah. players. It is really good in solo as well. You do have to line it up a little bit easier, but you can call on the action, you can play the card, and then help get a Nick Fury out for two cost. And I think that is really good. It's something that I want to build around. I, I kind of, now that I'm talking about it out loud, I was like, oh, I want to do a two-handed play with Welcome Aboard because that seems like a, a fun little team-up card. Not a team-up card, but a, a multiplayer card. But I wanted to mention it because I think it is a card that is slept on a lot. Yeah. That's uh, really interesting. I actually didn't occur to me at all, but like when I'm playing Guardians, I do use it. It goes in a lot of my Adam Warlock decks as well. And it's just, I do like it in multiplayer as well as solo. So that's really, really cool. But I had a lot of cards on my list that we didn't get to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I won't shout them all out, but when I was weighing up how much I want to go into recursion, the two cards I was also weighing up was, um, what's it called? Um, suit up. I think mm -hmm. that's really powerful potentially, you know, you just get control over what ally you're getting with that. And it can be really good for things like sidekick and Voltron, but also just good value to get the ally back. So that's really good. And kind of a trait locked kind of one, but kind of not because anyone could use it. It's actually the new Alliance card, Mutant Mayhem. Mm. can be really fun solo. It goes crazy in multiplayer with things like Hope Summer's Beast, but also uh, works with Sunfire because you can replay Sunfire Ooh. from your hand, then play the energy. It's got so many cool uses. So I wanted to shout that out. We've experimented with that a lot here at the table, uh, like two player, four player. Um, I've like messed around with it solo. It's it's really fun. Yeah, that I think that also hits the 
checks the fun box as well because yeah. pick up the allies and play them again get all the other, <laughs> other benefits that's really cool nice awesome well thank you for yeah. watching the video let us know in the comments who you think drafted the top are the better top five leadership cards it's probably going to be one of the two of us and you know <laughs> I'm Maybe. hoping <laughs> I'm hoping that you pick me, but I do want to hear. And also, if there are any cards that you think we left out of the draft, let us know down in the comments because it's all there's always a couple that I, I see. I'm like, yep, that makes a lot of sense. That should definitely be in this list. And so I am excited to see what y'all have. But let us know down in the comments. Villain Theory, can you tell everyone where they can find you? All your information will also be in the video description as well as a link to the newest episode of the podcast. Absolutely. You can find me. Basically on YouTube, I'm around, and obviously the podcast, find on Spotify, all those good places, oh, that's really good as well. Uh, yeah, YouTube, Villain Fairy, you'll find me. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you next time. Peace. See you guys.